So on to our last and final part of cirrhosis of liver. Nursing management. Nursing assessment, as usual, contains the subjective data and the objective data. The subjective data regarding past medical history includes previous viral, toxic, or idiopathic hepatitis, NASH, chronic biliary obstruction and infection, severe right-sided heart failure. Medications, any adverse reactions to any medications, use of anticoagulants, aspirin, NSAIDs, and acetaminophen or other hepatotoxic drugs. Any history of chronic alcoholism, weakness, and fatigue. Any history of anorexia, weight loss, dyspepsia, nausea, vomiting, and gingival bleed. With elimination, any history of dark urine, decreased urine output, light colored or black stools, flatulence, change in bowel habits, dry yellow skin or any bruising. Any assessment for assess for any dull right upper quadrant or epigastric pain, numbness, tingling of extremities or pruritus, any history of impotence or amenorrhea. And objective data includes physical examination for fever, cachexia, wasting of extremities, um, intercommentary system uh, assessed for ectric sclera, jaundice, petechiae, ecchymosis, spider angiomas, palmar erythema, alopecia, loss of axillary and pubic hair, peripheral edema, respiratory system assess for shallow rapid respirations and epistaxis. GI system look for abdominal distension, ascites, distended abdominal wall veins, palpable liver and spleen, foul breath, hematemesis, melina, and hemorrhoids. Possible diagnostic findings like anemia, thrombocytopenia, leukopenia, decreased albumin level, hypokalemia, abnormal liver function studies, increased INR, ammonia, and bilirubin levels, and abnormal abdominal ultrasound study or MRI. Objective data also includes assessing for altered mentation and asterixis, um, assessment of the gyne um, reproductive system including gynecomastia and testicular atrophy, Importance, loss of libido, amenorrhea, or heavy menstrual bleeding in women. Nursing diagnosis includes imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements related to anorexia, nausea, impaired utilization, and storage of nutrients, impaired skin integrity related to peripheral edema, ascites, and pruritus. Excess fluid volume related to portal hypertension and hyperaldosteronism. <laughs> ineffective self-help management related to ineffective coping and abuse of alcohol. Dysfunctional family process related to abuse of alcohol and inadequate coping skills as evidenced by deterioration in family relationships, family denial, neglected obligations, inability to accept and receive help appropriately. The goals of the nursing care would be relief of discomfort, have minimal or no complications, return to as normal a lifestyle as possible. Health promotion under implementation would include reducing or eliminating risk factors. Common risk factors for cirrhosis include alcohol, malnutrition, viral hepatitis, biliary obstruction, obesity, and right-sided heart failure. Prevention and early treatment of cirrhosis must focus on reducing and eliminating these risk factors. Alcoholism must be treated, urge patients to avoid alcohol ingestion and support their efforts. Adequate nutrition, especially for alcoholic and other individuals at risk for cirrhosis, is essential to promote liver degeneration. Identify and treat acute hepatitis early so that it does not progress to chronic hepatitis and cirrhosis. Bariatric surgery for morbidly obese individuals has been shown to occurrence, 
occurrences to reduce um, liver disease. Acute interventions. The focus of nursing care for a patient with cirrhosis is on conserving the patient's strength while maintaining muscle strength and tone. When the patient requires complete bed rest, implement measures to prevent pneumonia, thromboembolic problems, and pressure ulcers. Modify the activity and rest schedule according to signs of clinical improvement, example, decreasing jaundice, improvement in liver function studies. Anorexia, nausea, and vomiting, pressure from ascites, and poor eating habits all create problems in maintaining an adequate intake of nutrients. Oral hygiene before meals may improve patient's taste sensation. Make meat between meal nourishments available so that they can be taken at times when the patient can best tolerate them. Provide food preferences whenever possible. Explain the reason for any dietary restrictions to the patient and caregiver. Nursing care and assessment should include the patient's physiological response to cirrhosis. Is jaundice present? Where is it observed? Sclera, skin, or heart palate? What is the progression of the jaundice? If the jaundice is accompanied by pruritus, measures to relieve itching should be carried out. Cholesteramine or Questran or Hydroxyzine or Aderax may be ordered to help relieve the pruritus. Measures to help alleviate pruritus include baking soda or alpha carry baths, applying lotions containing calamine, antihistamines, soft or old linen, and control of temperature, not too hot and not too cold. Keep the patient's nails short and clean. Teach patients to rub with their knuckles rather than scratch with their nails when they cannot resist scratching to prevent bruises and bleeding. Note the color of the urine and stools. When jaundice is present, the urine is often dark, brown, and foamy when shaken. The stools may be gray or tan. Edema and ascites are frequent manifestations of cirrhosis and necessitate nursing assessments and interventions. Accurate calculation and recording of intake and output, daily weights and measurements of extremities and abdominal girth help in the ongoing assessment of the location and extent of edema. The abdomen should be marked with permanent markers so that the abdominal girth is measured at the same location. Paracentesis. Immediately before paracentesis, have the patient void to prevent a puncture of the bladder. When a paracentesis is done, the patient sits on the side of the bed or is placed in high fowler's position. Following the procedure, monitor for hypovolemia and electrolyte imbalances and check the dressing for bleeding and leakage. Maintain strict asepsis while draining or changing the peritoneal draining or dressing. Dyspnea is a frequent problem for the patient with severe ascites and can lead to pleural effusions. A semi follows or high follows position allows for maximal respiratory efficiency. Use pillows to support the arms and chest as they will increase the patient's comfort and ability to breathe. Meticulous skin care is essential because the edematous tissues are subject to breakdown. Use an alternating air pressure mattress or other special mattress. A turning schedule must be adhered to every minimum of every two hours. Support the abdomen with pillows. If the abdomen is taut, cleanse it very gently. The patient tends to move very little because of the abdominal discomfort and dyspnea. Range of motion exercises are helpful. Implement measures such as coughing and deep breathing to prevent respiratory problems. The lower extremities may be elevated. If scrotal edema is present, a scrotal support provides some comfort. Monitoring for fluid and electrolyte imbalances. 
When the patient is taking diuretics, monitor the serum levels of sodium, potassium, chloride, and bicarbonate. Monitor renal function, the bun and serum creatinine, routinely and with any change in the diuretic dosage. Observe for signs of fluid and electrolyte imbalance, especially hypokalemia. Hypokalemia may be manifested by cardiac dysrhythmias, hypotension, tachycardia, and generalized muscle weakness. Water excess is manifested by muscle cramping, weakness, lethargy, and confusion. Observe for and provide nursing care for any hematolo hematologic problems like bleeding tendencies, anemia, increased susceptibility to infection. Assess the patient's response to altered body image resulting from jaundice, spider angiomas, palmar erythema, ascites, and gynecomastia. The patient may experience a great deal of anxiety and embarrassment about these changes. Explain these phenomena and be a supportive listener. Provide nursing care with concern and warmth to help the patient maintain self-esteem. Bleeding varices. If the patient has esophageal or gastric varices, observe for any signs of bleeding from the varices such as hematemesis and hepmalina. If hematemesis occurs, assist the patient for hemorrhage, call the physician, and be ready to assist with treatment used to control the bleeding. The patient will be admitted to the intensive care unit. The patient's airway must be maintained. Balloon tamponade may be used in patients who have refractory bleeding that is unresponsive to band ligation or sclerotherapy. Patient will be intubated. The balloon should be checked for, replace, for placement by x-ray. The patency should also be checked. Prevent complications related to balloon tamponade, especially aspiration. Balloon tamponade. Nursing care includes monitoring for complications of rupture or erosion of the esophagus, regurgitation and aspiration of gastric contents, and occlusion of the airway by the balloon. If the gastric balloon breaks or is deflated, the esophageal balloon will slip upward, obstructing the airway and causing asphyxiation. If this occurs, cut the tube or deflate the esophageal balloon. Keep scissors at the bedside. Minimize regurgitation by oral and pharyngeal suctioning and by keeping the patient in a semi-fowler's position. The patient is unable to swallow saliva because the inflated esophageal balloon occludes the esophagus. Encourage the patient to expectorate and provide an emesis, emesis basin and tissues. Frequent oral and nasal care provides relief from the taste of blood and irritation from mouth breathing. The focus of nursing care for the patient with hepatic encephalopathy is on maintaining a safe environment <coughs> and sustaining life and assisting with measures to reduce the formation of ammonia. And so careful assessment of the patient is necessary. Perform neurological assessment every two hours and control factors known to precipitate encephalopathy. Ambulatory and home care by <clears throat> um, supportive measures with proper diet, rest, and avoiding hepatotoxic drugs as well as abstinence of alcohol is most important. Community support programs are available. Referral to community or home health nurse is given. Written instructions if necessary uh, with importance to when to seek medical attention and symptoms of complications should also be given to patients. Evaluation is done based on whether the patient is able to maintain food and fluid intake to meet needs and maintenance of skin integrity, maintaining fluid balance and treatment for substance abuse. So in, to summarize, we went through cirrhosis, the clinical manifestations, complications, diagnosis, collaborative care, and the nursing care problems involved in taking care of a patient with cirrhosis.